Hey there, here's Jan from Jovo and I'm back with a new tutorial video and it's actually been a while since I recorded my last video tutorial just because we've been quietly working on a huge new update. It's Jovo version 2 and it's actually a completely rewritten architecture. There's a lot of new updates, but still a lot of stuff that just changed under the hood to make it still as easy as possible for people to migrate their version one apps um, to Jovo version two, which then comes with a lot of new features with a CMS integration layer, new databases and all of these things. And I'm really happy to show you uh, how it works. And so uh, we launched version two beta yesterday so you can already play around until we do the stable release and I'm going to show you how it works. And so if you go to our website you can find our migration guide uh, which offers a few helpful guidelines on how to get started with version 2 of the framework and what changed and what are the new concepts and all of these things. And I'm going to walk you through this. And so let's let's get started by installing the uh, the beta version of Jovo CLI version 2. Let's let's just do that. Let's go to the terminal or to your preferred command line tool. And as it uh, a lot of change in version two of the CLI, we completely refactored that as well. And so this is why um, we usually recommend to first uninstall your previously installed uh, Jovo CLI to make sure we have a fresh new start. Let's do that. So do sudo npm uninstall globally the Jovo CLI. So let's do this, type in the password. So sometimes you have to use uh, sudo for this, sometimes you don't. So I still haven't figured that out. And so, okay, this is uninstalled. And so to install the beta of the new Jovo CLI, do uh, sudo npm install globally Jovo CLI at beta. So this is the beta tag, uh, which we just launched uh, yesterday. And so this will take a while. So I will um, walk you through uh, the migration guide uh, real quick. And so um, after the installation, uh, which you can find here, all I'm doing now, uh, we will also talk quickly about project structure. And, um, and then we have a few updated concepts here. We have a, um, everything in the new um, Jovo framework is a plugin now. And I will show you how to install plugins, how to enable plugins. And this also means that we have a, a different way of configuring things, but it's all pretty similar to version one. So um, no, no real surprises here, I think. What we're also using is uh, the new ES6 um, syntax. So instead of using this old one here, with the strings and so on and the function um, here, we, we just use this very simple and very, very straightforward uh, notation. So let's go back to the terminal and see how it, how it worked. Okay, everything worked. So the new Java CLI is installed. So if you now do um, a new, create a new project with Jovo new, I know we can call it v2 demo. This will automatically grab the, the v2 template, the v2 hello, hello world template. So as always, um, just do the Jovo new command. It downloads in the, the hello world template for v2 and then installs all the NPM dependencies depending on your internet connection. And so, and we will, and when this is done, uh, we will change the directory into this new newly created folder and take a look at it. So let's just open it directly in Visual Studio Code and take a look at the new folder structure. So this is the, the new folder structure and you can also see that in the uh, in the migration guide. So there's a few changes here. So um, instead of uh, using an app folder with an app.js inside and then an index.js here for um, for the server configuration. We put everything that is used for fulfillment. So everything that is later used on your server or on AWS Lambda, on Google Cloud Functions, we put all of this into an SRC, into a source folder. So just to make it, uh, to make sure that you only zip what's necessary, you only deploy that, uh, which saves us a lot of space in the package in the deployment package later and and yes and then also previously we had an app.json which we uh, renamed to project.js to clearly distinguish between what is project related configuration and what what is 
app related configuration which we we now have in our source folder source folder in the config.js so let's take a look at all of these files and so the models um, file didn't change at all the models folder we still have the jovo language model which can later be used to translate it into an alexa skill interaction model or dialog flow agent and then we have the the source folder here for all the deployment and so um, if you take a look here you can already see that the jovo framework is now a way more modular so we don't just have a jovo um, a Jovo framework and, that's, and then that's it. You can really use whichever you want. So it's very easy now to extend the Jovo framework with new platforms. If you don't want to use Alexa and just Google Assistant for one project, you can just get rid of that, like uninstall the, uh, the NPM package that comes with Jovo framework, uh, the platform Alexa package, and then that's it. And then also for the database integrations as well. So this comes with a default uh, file-based uh, database that uh, most of you already know that work with local development with Jovo, uh, but now also way easier to just get rid of it if you don't want to use it and so on. And so uh, one of the goals of Jovo version 2 was to make it more flexible uh, but also more transparent for you to use to really make sure you know what's happening under the hood and for you to make changes okay so let's let's move over to the app logic so here nothing really changed and that was super important for us to really keep it simple for you to make sure you understand um, that how it still works that it's still pretty much the same design specific language and so on there's only one thing that changed and so we, we did one change some people asked us to um, uh, for them to be able to add a Jovo object to not use this and so you could easily um, use use a Jovo as a parameter um, and then use this Jovo object to to do all the different commands so you could you could easily do this but what this means is that you're not able to use um, the input that we have here as a parameter anymore so in the in previous versions you could use this and we saw that a lot of people didn't really use that and so we got rid of that and now you have this dollar inputs which is um, an object of all the inputs that are coming from the requests from the voice platform you, and you can then access all the different inputs and this um, and this dollar um, those are all the different um, jovo objects so those are reserved variables reserved objects and you can you can recognize what is coming from jovo uh, when you see this uh, dollar input so for example also if you want to use uh, safe user data in our um, database uh, with our database integrations it used to be this dot user dot data dot key and then you, you could add a value for example this is old and now um, we we use the same thing we use dollar user dollar data and then dot key and so to really make sure that we have a consistent experience that it, for you it's very clear which variable does what which object does what and so on same thing with uh with the speech builder uh, so, for example, we could do something like this dollar speech dot add text and then add this to the speech builder and then just pass the, this in, initialized speech builder object and, and then that's it. Yeah, so this is um, basically how the uh, the app JS looks like now. So not a lot of changes. So we still try to make it as backwards compatible as possible. And then we have uh, the index JS, which is pretty much the same. Uh, we call it host configuration now. You probably don't really have to touch this unless you want to host your um, voice apps on either Google Cloud Functions or Microsoft Azure Functions and all the other um, hosting providers that we support and that are going to be supported in the future. And then we have the config.js. And so if you remember Jovo version 1, uh, we used to add the the config here to this constructor here which you can still do um, but we um, we uh, think it's uh, way more organized if you you have the config just here um, just um, somewhere else so that um, you can really you know where all your configurations are stored and so 
here we have just some some default configuration so logging is enabled we have the default intent map also more transparent now that you understand okay what is mapped how and also here's the database integration so if you wanted to later go and use uh, DynamoDB for example you could um, just comment that out use DynamoDB for example and use I think the one thing is table name for example you can have table name and so this is how and so and you you have you would have to add DynamoDB here as well the DynamoDB plugin and enable it here by putting by adding it to the uh, to the new command here um, and that's it and so this is how you could enable DynamoDB DynamoDB is usually not used in local development it's mostly used when people host their voice apps on AWS Lambda so in a QA or in a prod environment and uh, this is also how staging works now with the config.js so the config.js uh, is really used um, for all app related um, configurations that are necessary during runtime and so this is why um, for um, for different stages uh, we we use node node config. Uh, so for example, we can um, with node config that allows you to add to to add different overrides. So we could for example add a config dot prod dot js, and um, let's let's just copy paste that for now, and could just add DynamoDB as a database for the production. Um, so we're only using DynamoDB when we're in production and for, uh, for the other stages we have, we can still use FileDB, for example. So this is how configuration um, works uh, with Java version two. We think this is way more organized. Uh, let us know what you think. And so, and then there's all the project related stuff. And instead of using an app.json, we're now using an app.js. Also, this is now a JS file, which makes it very easy for you to require different files, use them into like, put them into different modules and so on. It also comes uh, pre-configured with an Alexa skill and a Google action object. So we don't have to use the Jovo init command anymore. Uh, so, but if you don't want to use Alexa or Google action, you can just comment that out, for example. And so this already comes with uh, a Jovo webhook uh, URL. So this references your Jovo webhook URL, and then that's it. And um, yeah, so this is all that all that changed really. You can still use the Jovo build command. This will create all of this and and deploy to deploy to the platforms and so on. And that's it. So there's, these are a few changes. And I want to show you one more thing that I'm super excited about. It's our new CMS uh, interface. So if you go, uh, go through our docs, you see that there's a whole new structure there. And we have all the integrations down there. And you have the CMS interface there. So the CMS interface uh, makes it easy um, for people to plug in different content management systems. We're working on a few additional ones, uh, but are super excited about Google Sheets actually. So you can, um, what we notice in our own projects is that it's super difficult if you really want, um, if you want to update content regularly and don't know um, how to do that, or you always have to tell the developer to do that and so on. And so we usually just use Google Sheets that look a little bit like this. Um, so we, we, we have a key and the value um, in the responses here. And so, um, and it was all a little, little bit of, it, it took a lot of time to set all of that up. And this is why we now make it very easy to use your own Google spreadsheet. So this is also just a plugin that you install. You have to add a little bit of stuff here to do your um, uh, to your config.js, and then that's it. And you can really um, use different sheet types. Um, notice that we have a dollar CMS here as well, so um, to keep it consistent. And you can define different sheet types. This is a responses sheet, for example. You can also have a key value sheet. Uh, we're we're working on a few more, and so this is. And you can even like 
extend that and define your own sheet types and so on. We can we are really looking forward to seeing how you are using the different CMS integrations and all of the other integrations we're working on. And so yeah, so this is um, version two. Let us know um, what you think. And there's a few more things that are coming. We're getting really excited to publicly announce it soon. But right now we're super excited about seeing what you're building with it, how you like the beta and so on. See you soon. Thank you.